I want to say good morning, but I realize you may watch this at any hour of the day or night. Welcome to our God Speaks class. Uh, Charles Smith got us started last week, and each week we'll look at a favorite verse or verses. Uh, remember the old song, Wonderful Words of Life? You older people certainly do. Well, that's what uh, I'm going to try to show you today, that God's Word is wonderful words of life, life and beauty. The passage I have chosen <clears throat> is one of my favorites. I don't, uh, <clears throat> it would be very difficult to choose the favorite. Uh, just like to say, you know, favorite ice cream. I have many favorites. Uh, favorite color blue, favorite song, that's hard to choose. Maybe Arise My Love by Val Durington. But a favorite verse, well, that's a challenge. But I thought of this passage that I'm going to talk about today, but I want to give the context for it. It's in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. And Peter, yes, Peter the fisherman, the one who denied even knowing Christ after he had just eaten the Passover meal with him, is a, a wonderful writer with the help of the Holy Spirit, of course, and I'm amazed at these beautiful words in his first chapter. It's a passage of praise to God because of our salvation, because of our living hope, because of, our, uh, because of the power of God that shields us and uh, protects us. There are just so many things in this paragraph. But then we'll zero in on verses 6 and 7. I want to read the passage. <clears throat> It's a doxology to start with. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In His great mercy, He has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. Kept or reserved in heaven for you. Through faith... You are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have suffered grief and all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed." Though you've not seen him, you love him. Even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. <clears throat> this passage is one that has meant a lot to me through many years. I've used it for funerals, at gravesides, I've used it to encourage people when I worked as a hospital chaplain. But for my personal life, it's been especially meaningful when the trials become difficult. Because in a context of talking about our living hope, because we have a living Savior who's resurrected from the dead, because of the living Word of God, because of, uh, of the living water and the living bread, so much is about life the abundant life that Christ came to give us. But in the midst of all of this, he says that for a little while, we're going to suffer all kinds of trials, which is certainly true. Jesus said in John 16, in this world, you will have trouble. Uh, he was right. We find that out nearly every day. And so <clears throat> how do we face those troubles and trials? How do we deal with them? Many times we ask the question, why would our loving God allow us to go through this? Why would he let us suffer? Uh, that's the age-old question about human suffering, of course. But in this passage, we have one of the answers. The Apostle Peter has been through difficulties. He was arrested uh, along with John and others. He's been in prison. He's been freed. He's been threatened not to preach or teach in the name of Jesus. He knows about persecution and the people to whom he's writing in Asia Minor, these five provinces that are mentioned, he, uh, <clears throat> he knows they need encouragement and certainly he is giving that to them. What, a, what wonderful words of life 
we have here in this passage. So let me just uh, read it again. He says, In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while you may have suffered grief and all kinds of trials. How can he tie joy and grief together? All of us have been through grief and loss. We know what that feels like. It, uh, it brings us down. Uh, it takes away our energy. It takes away our desire to, to even eat. Uh, it, it just interferes with, with life in a big way. But he says for a little while, and of course when we're in our trials, it never seems like a little while. It seems like it's going way too long. Uh, of course, in the context of eternal life, a little while could be our whole life. But probably Peter is thinking that this is a temporary situation. They'll make it through it. Like sometimes we say when we're going through the pandemic or something difficult, this has come to pass, and eventually it will. So even at, Peter is talking about a little while when, when we're in the midst of it. It doesn't seem like a little while. But he says, you may have suffered grief and all kinds of trials. Uh, <clears throat> that's the uh, word I'm thinking about here because we have so many different kinds of trials. The word uh, varied or different kinds of trials is actually from the idea of many colored. We have a blue Monday. We have a gray uh, Thursday like today with drizzle and rain and gray skies. We may have a bright pink day or... Uh, or yellow day, but uh, in all these different colors of our days, we have trials. But why have they come? Here's, th here's the answer. These have come so that, so that what, Peter? So that your faith may be proved genuine and result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. They are the test of our faith. I'm reminded of the, uh, the wise builder who built on the rock versus the foolish that built on the sand. The foundations are only revealed when the storm comes, when the flood comes. The, the tempest and uh, all of that reveals the foundation of the house. The same is true of our faith. It's the storms and trials that reveal whether our faith is real whether it's fake, whether it's false, is, are we just pretending? But in times of trial and trouble, uh, the difficulties, our faith is being tested, and when we come through that storm, uh, we can rejoice that uh, our faith is genuine. And in the same time, we're proving to God that, that it is genuine. The passage would remind you, of course, of James chapter 1, verse 2, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, when you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. So we need to remember when we ask these questions about why, that these are opportunities for us to prove our faith, both to God and, and to ourselves. We want our faith to be genuine. But he goes on to say in that context that our faith is more valuable, more precious than gold. He says, you have come, uh, these have come so that your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine. And so our faith is, is so precious, more than gold or silver or platinum or whatever you want to think of for for those valuable things. And uh, so our faith is greater than, than gold. Uh, he's talking about refining gold so that the impurities are burned away through the furnaces. Our faith is refined and uh, becomes stronger. In the testing process, we want to <clears throat> come out of this process of endurance and patience. We want to come out stronger and not allow the, uh, the problems and difficulties to uh, weaken our faith. Personally, there have been many, many times uh, where this verse is significant to me because, for example, in 2003, my wife, Carolyn, had ARDS and was in the hospital for 17 days, 10 of those in ICU 
the first two or three days not expected to live. And she came through that, the family came through, we had a lot of you who were praying for her. And in those times, uh, I look back at this verse and say, uh, Lord, uh, I realize that this is a challenge and a test, but we're coming through this with faith. And uh, of course, other times of uh, just this last December, we had COVID and we made it through that, including four days in the hospital for Carolyn again. And we've been through years like 2011 when we lost uh, three members of our family, including uh, my mother and son-in-law and brother-in-law. And uh, we lost three very close friends. And uh, it's just like, you know, when, when are we gonna get through this? Uh, but one step at a time, one day at a time, <clears throat> and our faith is there to know that God is with us and he will see us through. And so, uh, I want to close with these words from, uh, from Peter himself when he says, The God of all grace has called you to this eternal glory in Christ after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. I encourage you to read 1 Peter 1, 3 through 9 out loud. And listen to those words, beautiful words.